The designs of his heart are from age to age, to rescue their souls from death, and to keep them alive in famine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen. How precious to us to hear these beautiful words, to hear them at the greatest crisis point in the history of our holy religion. I'm not talking about any physical virus. I'm talking about modernism, heretical teachings and practices at every level of our holy church. In the midst of this great crisis, a crisis as grave as the Aryan crisis of the third and fourth centuries, as serious as the Protestant revolt in the 16th century, we hear the designs of his heart are from age to age to rescue their souls from death and to keep them alive in famine. We hear these beautiful words on this, the solemnity of the sacred heart. These words tell us that Jesus Christ has designs, has plans, plans from age to age. And that, of course, includes our own. Nothing in our world is a surprise to our Lord. Nothing comes at him in a way that is unexpected. From the Blessed Sacrament, when we gaze at him in the monstrance, his heart is beating with plans, with designs. His heart is not cold, not indifferent. It is on fire with love, full of concern. But concern for who? Concern for what? Listen once again to the introit. The designs of his heart are from age to age, to rescue their souls from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our Lord's workings of providence are directed towards the elect. To rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. Our Lord's design the plan that beats in his heart, the plan that continues to unfold itself through every age and generation, is a plan to fill the kingdom of heaven with the souls of the elect. Perhaps, as some of the fathers of the church thought, it is a plan to replace a number of fallen angels, to occupy heaven with a precise number of human created souls, blessed destined individuals, individuals destined to take positions of those unhappy angels who followed Lucifer into the fires of hell. We do not know the number of souls who will make up the elect. We do know, however, that the number will be small. Our Lord speaks of his flock as a little flock, he tells us that the road that leads to life is narrow and hard, and only a few find it. And the first Pope, St. Peter, in his letter writes, If the righteous is scarcely saved, what will become of the godly and the sinner? That is, if those who are nigh worthy of canonization barely make it to heaven, what can be said of all the rest? My goodness! It is an awful tragedy that so many souls will be lost. The vast majority of created persons will choose to spend eternity in hell. And yet the miracle is. The miracle is that in our dark fallen world where impurity is rife, where the commandments are mocked, where the faith is treated with such contempt and is so poorly taught, the miracle is that there will be some who are saved. How is it that some of us will make it to heaven? How is it that in spite of original sin, in spite of the ease at which we can commit a mortal sin and lose everything, in spite of the evils, the evils of the world in which we live, some of us, we know, are going to make it? For the answer, once again, we turn to our introit. The designs of his heart are from age to age, to rescue their souls from death and to keep them alive in famine. My friend, whether you, whether I, am numbered among the elect, that's something neither of us know. We cannot have any certainty, any absolute certainty of that. But with great love, 
with great confidence, we know, we know with certainty that for the elect, for the sake of the elect, the whole of history is being ordered and governed. From age to age, our Lord has his eyes on the elect. He knows who they are, whether he chose them anterior to foreseeing their lives and their merits, or whether it was in some manner in view of them. That is something for the theologians to debate. We do not know, but gratuitously, God has chosen his elect. He knows who his sheep are and he sees that they are separated from the goats. He calls them by name and they follow him. The entire universe revolves for the sake of the elect. The greatest tragedies in human history, they are permitted by God. They are permitted only in so far as they will fail to bring his elect to destruction, to sin, to damnation. My goodness, how blessed you are, elect of God. Our Lord's heart perpetually wills to rescue your souls from death, to snatch them from mortal sin, from falling into final damnation. Oh, blessed elect, elect of God, everything in world history revolves around you. Our Lord's designs from age to age will never fail to rescue you from the peril of mortal sin from the disaster of final damnation. The designs of his heart are from age to age to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. To keep them alive in famine. There has been no greater drought, no greater famine than that in which we are presently living. How blessed is that sacred heart of our Lord, he has planned for his elect to be kept alive, to be kept spiritually alive in this great crisis, this great famine. I can see it. Perhaps you can see it. The ways and means through which God is keeping his chosen, his elect, keeping them alive in this great, great famine. You see it. You notice it. Pure souls pure families, somehow kept uncontaminated by the terrible evils of society, the sudden flowering of vocations to religious life, the unexpected and dramatic conversions to the one true faith, the temporal disasters and illnesses and what seems like deaths that have come too early. Our Lord is rescuing his elect from the danger of eternal damnation. And he's keeping them and he's keeping those who will remain on earth, the elect that remain for now as members of the church militant. He's keeping them alive in famine. Oh, blessed heart of the Redeemer, beating in the blessed sacrament, beating for the sake of the elect, planning all things for their sanctification, for their well-being, rescuing their souls from spiritual death, keeping them alive in this awful famine. Lord, I do not know if I am numbered among that elect, but I thank you that at this moment it seems to me that you are providing from me. It seems when I look at my life, when I examine my conscience, when I come before your Eucharistic face, it seems to me that you are keeping me alive in this great famine. And in seeing this, in seeing your providential provision for me, I gain some hope some confidence indeed that I may be among one of those of, of those blessed elect. When I see how you've taught me to say the daily rosaries, to attend daily mass, to meditate on your passion each day, to confess each week, to wear the round scapula of Mount Carmel. When I see these things, these things that you have brought into my life, that you have provided for me in spite of all the evils around me and all the disorder in the family that I grew up in. I can only bless you, O oh Jesus, for time and time again I can say with the introit, the plan of your heart has been from every age of my life. You have rescued my soul from death, not once, but countless times, and you've You've rescued my soul from the verge of hell and you are keeping me alive 
in this terrible famine. O oh Lord, I beg you, consider me as numbered among your holy elect. Continue to feed me, continue to protect me, and have mercy on those whom I love, and who you love even more than I do. Rescue their souls, Lord, according to your holy will and to your greater glory. Rescue their souls from death. Bring them into the state of grace once more. Return them to the sacrament of confession. And then, my sweet Jesus, keep them alive in this famine. O Saint Joseph, who provided for the Holy Family, intercede for me. O Blessed Mother, in whose womb the elect are formed, Pray for me, nurture me, lead me. The designs of his heart are from age to age, to rescue their souls from death, to keep them alive in famine. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Ghost. Amen.